dead of night on the outskirts of Dublin City, a unit races to the scene of a house fire. Reports claim flames are pouring out of the upstairs bedroom windows. The crews have already suited up in breathing apparatus. They have to be ready to hit the ground running. Right, right, right. Could be this one here, Steve. Could be this one. Next one, next one. Next one, next one, next one yeah. Going well. Yeah. See flames coming out. Flames out the window. Yeah. There's lots of things going on in the back of the truck on the way to an incident, especially in the dead of the night. The adrenaline starts pumping and you start to kick into gear and it kicks up everything, it focuses everybody's mind. Immediately people are putting on BA sets. The people in the back who aren't putting on are helping each other correctly on. So when they pull up, bang, they're ready to go grab a forced aid or a 45 mil hose off the truck. Thank you, sir. 45. Yeah. Water on. Water on. Pressure. When the branch operator has actually water on, that will only last a few minutes from the water from the tank in the truck. They're hiding around, is there? They're hiding. When you see a fire crew pulling up, people don't just jump out of the truck and go off and do what they feel like doing. It. People are allocated tasks by their number. Numbers two and four, they're the people who put on the BA sets. Number five is tasked with the, getting the water from the hydrant. Yeah, you go, you go with it. All of those things are happening really, really quickly. Get another 45 into that window. has been contained and brought under control. While the house has received extensive damage, fortunately all persons have been accounted for and the adjoining properties saved. Yet another late night call out for Dublin Fire Brigade enters its final stages. Most domestic fires occur in the middle of the night when we're all asleep. The best advice we can give anybody, always close all doors. What you're doing there, you're creating compartments within the house, a compartment that will contain that fire. Your average panel door within a domestic house will hold the fire back for about 30 minutes. Never go back into a fire for personal effects or for pets. Get out, call the fire brigade out and stay out. Dublin's trainee firefighters are on the march. They've developed into a proud and disciplined unit. They've come a long way from the ragtag bunch that entered the halls at the O'Brien Institute six months ago. Today, there's an extra spring in their step because in a matter of hours, they will officially become Dublin firefighters. The big day, the pass out. The finishing line and the most nervous day of your life so far. <laughs> it feels as if that entire six months has just been condensed down into one day. They have to get completely right. Don't speed up. Well done, that was perfect. I'm finishing on that. Do it like that later on, lads. That's bang on. Okay, well done. Hooray! Right, turn. By the left, quick, march. Right field. For trainee firefighter Philip Ferguson, today's ceremony is a somewhat bittersweet occasion. The mixed emotions today, you know, we want to want to get it done and get it over with and move on and also at the same time like it's it kind of be sad that we're some guys you won't see again because of watches and whatever like that you know. All right lads, yeah. best of luck, thanks very much, last chance, <laughs> <laughs> last time together is 25, never happen for you again, make the most of it, stay switched on, best of luck with it. Thanks, 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 thanks,
It's been a, quite a journey. In some ways, it's surreal that it's over. It, it has been difficult at times, been very tiring. You know, I've, I've uh, young kids at home as well and stuff, so, you know, it is hard work. You put a lot of errors in here, doing a lot of work in here, and then home, doing a lot of work and a lot of study in the evening, so. It's been a hard six months, but it's enjoyable. A lot of us are quite sad to go, but at the same time, we're, we're looking forward to now to a new part of the journey, like getting out there and getting, getting stuck in. We had our love. I love, I love, I love you don't find every day. Baby, 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 I need your love. I need your love. I need your love. Don't walk it on back. Don't walk it on back. The recruits work hard to make sure they look absolutely immaculate in their dress uniforms. They've forged a real bond over the last six months. It's hard to believe that in just a few hours, they'll be welcomed to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the firefighting family. It feels like we only started like seven months. Don't start crying now. <laughs> At this stage, I've probably seen about half of them again. The first day they see they're a little bit reluctant to have a normal conversation that will go on in the fire station. And then they realize that the, the person that was training them, sh shouting and roaring at them three or four months previously is a human being the same as everybody else. And, you know, the, the officers get plenty of slagging in the station. They're just considered part of the crew, the same as everybody else. Have a good day, right? Enjoy yourself. So, I've seen you, yes. a lot of, and you. Good luck, Mr. Coins. I just wanted to go well for everybody, and we've put in a lot of hard work. So I just want to do it justice, and, and do the instructors justice, and the, the fire brigade justice to show where we've come from over the six months. An advanced paramedic vehicle is deployed with lightning speed to an emergency on the south side of the city. Firefighters Terry Dorr and Tom McLaughlin are two of the nearly 40 advanced paramedics who work for Dublin Fire Brigade. So when a car comes into the control room, there's kind of six categories, and they're categorised as Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha and Omega calls. The advanced paramedic vehicle um, primarily will go to Echo and Delta calls. And they're the kind of more serious cases, like the cardiac arrests, or this type of case we're going to now. Further information received from the control room there was that it's a, a diabetic patient with a blood sugar of 1.2. So that patient's unresponsive and unconscious now at the moment. Ideally, that patient should have a blood sugar of greater than 4. So I've got my bag. Give me the tennis there. The APs arrive at the house and quickly administer care to the elderly diabetic. An ambulance crew has already provided treatment, but the patient failed to respond. The APs immediately direct intravenous medication, the quickest and most effective way to raise his blood sugar levels. How are you feeling? You were asleep in the bed for a while. We're just getting some sugar into you again, okay? A bit more, all right? I'm just getting you a pinch of your finger here again, just to check your sugars again. 6.7. 6.7 yeah. Now yeah, we should throw your legs up there while you're, while you're there and we get you out into the ambulance, all right? Neil, good man. How are you feeling now? Oh, better, yeah. Good man, good man. The paramedics arrived, they've given them an IM glucagon, which would normally bring the sugars back up a little bit. It didn't work on this occasion, so we, we've given them IV glucose, which brought it up to 6.7. Um, and that's really what he needs, you know. In that, that particular case there is a true emergency. Like, that job there is uh, blood sugars at 1.9. Like, there's a risk there that, that man can go into a coma and, and, and die, you know, if he, if he wasn't seen to properly. Uh, he's taking his insulin this morning. Obviously, he probably hasn't eaten very well uh, and uh, ended up in this situation. Within minutes, advanced paramedics McLaughlin and Dewar are racing to another emergency across the city. 72-year-old female who's unconscious but breathing is what we've been told. There is a fire truck and an ambulance responding at the same time. It's just we have a bit of a transit to do across the city, so I hope we get there. Alpha, we'll go ahead. Ah, uh, we'd be in attendance in about two minutes, over. Hello? 
brought up a fire and ambulance? No, so we're looking for an ambulance and fire brigade. There's a car crash and we think the car is going to go on fire. Uh, we got someone there speaking to the car, okay? The car is after overturning and I think the guy is knocked out. Is the person trapped? Yeah. Conscious? Yeah. I don't think so. They're trying to talk to him. Is he breathing? Don't. They're trying to turn the car back up no, the way. Tell, tell, tell them to leave the car alone. No. It's really important. Don't move the man. Tell them that. Shout at them. Charlie, don't, don't turn the car the right way. They say leave it like that. He came around the corner and hit a curb and there's a fireman on site here now, an off-duty fireman. Yeah, so. we have people on the way there now, OK? Two units have been called to attend to an overturned car in West Dublin. The driver is conscious but trapped inside his vehicle. First on the scene is off-duty officer Brian Tracy, who's already entered the car to calm the driver. What's happening? Right. Who's it? It's me. Oh, you, Brian, what's happening? Is any body part trapped? No. No. He's the consciousness talking, yeah. Can you get his head from that angle down there and we get Brian out? We'll take that door. Yeah. Can you hold that door for a second? I was outside a house talking to a, an old neighbour and we heard this unmerciful crash. We looked up the road and there was a car flying through the air. So I just instantly ran up to see what I could do and help out. Got it. Can you hold that door? Unfortunately, when someone gets flipped upside down, they can do serious damage. Well, you, Nick. you hold the dock. The driver's legs are trapped behind the steering wheel. As another crew arrives on the scene, it's essential he does not move. He may have injured his spine in the crash. The only safe way to remove him is to take the car apart, piece by piece. They start by taking stabilizers and extension ladders from the truck. This steadies the car before the firefighters attempt to remove the doors. However, spinal injuries aren't the only cause for concern. If he had a severe head injury, he could be at an altered level of consciousness. So again, we'd ask him certain questions. We have a thing called the Glasgow Coma Scale. It's from three to 15. He was at about 14 because he had some inappropriate words where he was confused and maybe a little bit dazed. I mean, he just flipped through the air in his car. He was bound to be a little bit in shock. Did he put us out? With a bit of elbow grease and some hydraulic equipment, the back doors come loose. Meanwhile, the paramedics discuss the safest strategy for freeing the driver. Put a board in here. Put a on them. Can you get out that seat water if you can do? Oh, hey, Darren, we're back to seat where we'll be able to take straight out past you. Yeah. Can you see the seat winder there, yeah, Taylor? Uh, just have to, will you let go of that hand no, for a sec, no, buddy? I won't. I'm not no. going anywhere. No. You no. have to, pal. I'm looking for the seat winder to get you out, you me. No, it's on it. The roller's on his side. Okay, lads. You better have just cut this one here, cut that one there, release cut there, release cut there, and then you bring it back out this way. The only safe way to extract him is folding back the metal roof. Keeping the casualty calm during this process is absolutely key to his safe removal. we have got to get your arm back in, and then we're just going to have to do a little core here to get you out, right? Yeah, bring yeah. your arm in there, my arm. Oh, I'm here, oh, I'm here, relax. Oh, you have it. You're all right, we're here. We'll get you out in two seconds, all right, pal? Nice and calm. You won't be here much longer, all right? Yeah. It's rarely a quiet day for Dublin's advanced paramedics. They're the first to attend most emergencies, and often that means confronting one of the scars on this fair city, heroin abuse. So we're going to an uh, overdose. It's a reverse in drug we can give for um, heroin, which is naloxone. We'll give them some of that intra intravenous if we can get into them. We'll see what's going on. These are very common. When you get one in the city, you tend to get quite a few on the same day. What normally happens is you get some heroin, which is quite extra strong, and uh, the addicts take the heroin and it puts them down and stops them breathing, so that's what we're going to now. An ambulance has already arrived on the Keys to care for the man who has overdosed. The patient is semi-conscious and AP Door seeks an update from his colleague. So what's happening, Liam? I'm up to 99% uh, now on there. Is he breathing for himself? The GCS is 10. Yeah. Uh, Known heroin user. Right, guys. He was eight. Count his rest there now for me, please. Okay, we got a bung. Can we check his sugars now, shall we, guys? Yeah, I just got an answer there. The lock's on, yeah? Give him some of that. There you go. Okay. Oh, cheers, bud. Got a flush, Tommy? Okay, so 400 in the lock's on. He's 
400, has he? 400 mics. Played 400 locks on just now. All right. IV. Rest are annoying, OK, so he's still down on the rest. Looking for a location. Okay. The IV in the locks on should sort him now. No, he's going because he's... He was verbalised. There we go. Head on me out, Flower. Lie down there. Lie down. Leave that on you. Leave it on you. Leave it on you. Do you know why you're in the back of an ambulance? No, you've overdosed, OK? OK, so I had to give you something to locks on because you weren't breathing. Do you understand? We've already given it to you. That's not going to last too long, do you understand? So you may go under again. So I need you to go in the hospital and I need you to stay there for a little while, do you understand? Do you understand you weren't breathing on the street? Do you understand that you were almost dead? Do you understand this? Okay. Do not leave the hospital for at least an hour. Do you understand this? Okay, good man. Okay, guys, thanks mate, thanks for the call. Once we make the five or six cuts that it needs, we can just literally slide that roof away. We'll do it with a car in any position. That's why we like to leave cars the way they lie, because we can access it from any angle. Yeah, yeah, I have his head, go on. The only safe way to extract them is folding back the metal roof. You don't move your head for us now for a minute. I let go my hand and we're getting you out now, so if you let go, we'll be able to get you out. Yeah. Right. We can stop and go again. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Start to move and move. Watch his right arm, right arm. Right, I'm going to move. The patient is stable and appears to have escaped any serious injury. If it wasn't for the intervention of off duty firefighter Brian Tracy, the outcome could have been much worse. The people that were there were trying to do their best. But if he has a spinal injury and they throw it back onto its wheels, it could compress something further in his spine and maybe paralyse him. Off duty, it doesn't matter. The training is there. It kicks in instantly. You don't even think. You just, you just get involved. We don't just clock in at nine and go home at five, and that's our job. We're 24 hours on duty, really. If we can help, we will. In front of the gathered crowd, the capital's newest crop of first responders march proudly forward. Chief Fire Officer Pat Fleming presides over today's passing out ceremony. It's an emotional event that lets the recruits show off their newly acquired skills to their family and loved ones. This is a proud day for many people. Every recruit here today is following in the footsteps of a long line of first responders who have carried the badge of Dublin Fire Brigade with pride and honour. You're entrusted with that duty. I have no doubt that you will continue to deliver a first-class service to the citizens of Dublin. Enjoy your day. Hooray! By the right! Win! Back! When you've hoped for something for so long, when you've really wanted something for so long, and then it finally comes along, for me, one of the proudest days of my life. It's a lot of commitment not just for the guys in here, but for the families at home. It just it takes over your whole life. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't seeing my kids probably till Friday or Saturday. Every week, you know, all week I'd be up and gone. Before they were up and I would be home and they'd be in bed. So there was a, there was a lot in it, like, you know, a lot of guys like that like, wouldn't, wouldn't have seen their family for pretty much six months. It's a day that it makes it all worthwhile as well to say, look, I came out the other side, I'm still here, I'm able to do it. And any doubts that you had before, like, you know, what am I doing or is, is it worth it, whatever. And then at the end, you're saying, like, of course, like, how was I ever doubting myself? Right. 
you're just looking forward to the next stage, really getting out there and, and doing what you've been trying to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think you can all see the high levels of proficiency these wonderful young men and women have achieved in just some of their firefighting proficiencies. We'd just like to thank you for a wonderful demonstration today. And I give you Class 1, 2013, from the Dublin Fire Department. It's been a long road, but they've made it. They're ready for any emergency now. For the 25 new graduates, it's a day to savour. An incredible journey to share with those they love most. A few of the lads are feeling a bit emotional at the moment, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't as well. Like, you know, it was a lot of hard work uh, coming for this day. Proud, like, so spending it with the kids and enjoying it. Mm, you're the best girl. <laughs> I was doing it because I wanted to better myself and give them better opportunities in life. But you're doing it to take care of your family. At the age they're at already, like, you know, they love it, you know, that your, your daddy is a firefighter. So she tells me she wants to be a, you know, a firefighter when she's older. It'd be really sad as well because we've been here for so long and I think it was just a build up of nerves and then actually the reality of it all coming to an end. I was very emotional, so they had a few giggles at me outside. A few tears, yeah. <laughs> It was like only yesterday that we started, that we were out here standing on the front steps in our tracksuit. Yeah. Didn't even have a uniform. Flew in. Yeah. yeah. Well, it feels a bit surreal. It feels like it is very surreal. gone from recruit to proper yeah. firefighter like that, but no, delighted, yeah. Proud of myself. Starting work on Monday yeah. and... I'm in on Saturday, so... Looking forward to it. A bit nervous as well, obviously, but yeah, yeah really looking bit anxious forward to it. Going out into the big bad world. <laughs> <laughs> The odd couple of crime fighting are getting up close and personal as rigged.